Good afternoon. The objective of this video is to show you how to use a TI graphing calculator to find the zeros of a quadratic function, also known as a parabola. On my screen, you will see a picture of the keyboard of a TI-84 calculator. This keyboard is very similar to the keyboard of a TI-83 plus calculator. So this, tu this tutorial uh, should be good if you have a TI-83 plus or a TI-84 plus calculator. So the objective is graph a quadratic function and use the TI graphing calculator to find the zeros of that quadratic function or parabola. So here is the graphing calculator. Right now it has a blank screen. Uh, since first we're going to graph the graphing calculator, we want to make sure that the graph is set up so that we can see what we're graphing. To do that, I'm going to hit this middle button, Zoom. Click that. It brings up the Zoom menu. I am going to choose option 6 on the Zoom menu. That will bring up what they call the Zoom Standard window. Uh, to select that, I enter 6 down here on the keypad. When I hit, as soon as I hit 6, it brought up this screen of, of an XY of a Cartesian plane. I have an X axis and I have a Y axis. Now it doesn't show uh, what the value of the, the increment in between tick marks in the x direction and the y direction are. In the standard uh, graphing window, the Z zoom, the zoom Z standard box, each of these increments is one unit. Uh, so I, have, I am ready to graph. To get rid of this screen, to go back to the regular input screen, I'm going to quit this window. To quit this window, as well as any other window in the TI graphing calculator, uh, we need to get to this quit function. The quit function is up here in blue above the mode key. It's the second function that we access with this button. If we just hit the button mode, it would bring up the mode menu. If I hit the second bu button first and then I hit mode, it will quit the screen. The second hitting the second button before the command on above each key invokes that command. I'm back to my blank screen. Now I want to enter the equation of the quadratic function that I want to graph. This over here in this window, you'll see this I've written. This is the graph of the parabola y equals x squared plus 2x minus 5. Looks like I got a little bit ahead of myself. I want to enter this equation into the graphing calculator and then graph it. Where I enter equations to be graphed on the graphing calculator is here on the left hand side. There's a button on the button it says y equals. Click that. It brings up this equation menu. Uh, there are seven rows. I can graph at least seven equations at the same time on the same graph. Uh, in our situation, we're, I'm just going to graph one. So it's going to be y1. That means the first equation in y. So the cursor is right where I want it to be. Now I need to enter x squared plus 2x plus 5. To enter that, the first thing I need to enter is x. To type in the variable x, I come here to the second row, second column, and there's this button. The first letter on that button is x. If I hit that one time, it enters the variable x. Now I want to square x and I'm going to just continue typing the characters exactly as they appear here in my equation. This upper caret uh, you will find here underneath the clear button. I hit that. The exponent is 2. I enter 2 plus 2. Remember where x is? It's right up here. 2x minus 5. x squared plus 2x minus 5. Exactly what I want to graph. Now I'm done with this window second quit. Now I am ready to graph. To graph, to see what a graph of this quadratic function or parabola looks like, I select this button, the graph button. Ta-da! That is a graph of this parabola, y equals x squared plus 2x minus 5. Notice two things about this parabola. Uh, it crosses the x-axis in two locations. This, at this location over here, to the left, 
and at this location over here to the right. Now, these are called the zeros of the parabola or the quadratic function. They are the locations where the parabola crosses the x-axis. These are also the locations where the y value of the coordinate is zero. Thus, we call them zeros. So all the zeros are, are they are where your function or shape crosses the x-axis. Uh, so there's the first zero and the second zero. Our job is to find the location, the exact coordinates of those zeros. And the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to do that using your TI graphing calculator. So, second quit, I'm going to get rid of my graph. Now, to find the zeros, I am going to invoke this calc menu. So, notice calc is in blue above the trace key. So, to access the blue function, I have to hit the second blue button, and then I hit trace to get the calculate menu. There's this handy function uh, called zero. It's option two in this menu. This function will allow you to, enables you to find the zeros of functions if you know how to use it. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. The first thing I'm going to do, or the next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to hit two to select zeros. That brings up this screen. It's my same old parabola, but there are a couple of new things on the screen. First, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see uh, the equation for our function and y, our quadratic function, y, here it's y1, equals x squared plus 2x minus 5. Now, down here on the left-hand screen, it's asking you a, a question. It's asking me a question. Left bound. I am going to enter two numbers. Uh, they're going to be a left boundary and a right boundary. In between those two boundaries, the calculator is going to crank its numbers and look for a zero of this function. So I'm going to show you how to enter the left boundary and the right boundary. Uh, notice here this flashing X. That is our cursor. Uh, the cursor travels along the path of uh, the polynomial of the function that we're graphing. To move the cursor to the left, I hit the left arrow button. To move the cursor to the right, I hit the right arrow button. Now the first zero I want to find is this left zero because I like to work from left to right. So I need to get the cursor over here. So I'm going to hit this left arrow button to make the cursor travel left along the path of our parabola or quadratic function. So I'm going to keep clicking move left until I just cross the x-axis. This point is to the left of this zero. So that's going to be my left boundary, uh, the search window for the calculator, so I hit enter. Now the calculator is asking me for the right bound, the, the right hand side of the window that the calculator is going to look for the zero in. So I need to, to move to the right of this zero. To move right, I just move the I just click the right arrow buttons here. Now I'm to the right of that zero. So I hit enter. I'm happy with that right boundary. Now you'll see this left arrow and right arrow up here just beneath the equation. That shows you the search window. In between this value of x and that value of x, the calculator is going to look for the value of x where the function, the parabola crosses the x-axis, uh, that's going to be the zero. It's asking me to guess that. Well, remember each of these is one. I'm going to make an educated guess. Negative one, negative two, negative three, and then negative four. Somewhere in between negative three and negative four, the function crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to say, heck, halfway in between, looks good to me, maybe about negative three and a half. That's my guess. I keep, just keep that in my brain. Maybe I can jot it down on my paper. But that's where I think the zero of the parabola is, in that ballpark. So I don't have to enter anything here on the calculator, except I'm just going to hit enter now. And the calculator crunches its numbers, and it spits out here in the lower left-hand corner. It displays the zero. 0, x equals negative 3.44949. This value of x matches the location here where the parabola crosses the x-axis. 
The first place where the parabola or quadratic function crosses the x-axis is when an x approximately equals negative 3.45. Notice that I rounded the, the number, the zero, the, the value that the calculator found for the zero, to two decimal places, uh, to the nearest hundredth place, so negative 3.45. This is an approximation, it's not exact. It's good enough for me at this point. This is the first zero of our parabola or quadratic function. The coordinates of this point are negative 3.45 comma zero, our x coordinate and our y coordinate. This is the place where the parabola crosses the x-axis, the, the first place where it crosses the x-axis. Now remember, as we travel along our parabola, over here there's a second zero that we have to find. I'm going to step through the same steps to find the x value of that zero. So second, quit. Now I'm going to invoke the calc menu. So second trace brings up the calc menu. Select option two to get the zero and it's going to take me through the same series of prompts. Enter a left boundary for the window where it's going to look for this is the x value of this zero. Uh, so I need to move this cursor over to just before that zero. So I need to travel along the path of the parabola to the right. So move, move, click, 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 all the way over here. I'm going to go back just a little bit. That looks like a good left boundary. I'm just left, just a skosh left of the location where the parabola crosses the x-axis here. So I hit enter. I'm happy with that. Now the calculator is asking me to enter the right boundary. Move the cursor right till I'm just a skosh beyond the location where the parabola crosses the x-axis. That looks good. I hit enter. Then it's going to ask me to uh, give it my best guess. What's a good ballpark? What value do I expect this second zero to be? Uh, well, here's one, here's two. It looks like the parabola crosses the x-axis somewhere between one and two. So since my vision isn't that great, I'm just going to say 1.5. That's my guess. Now I don't have to enter any that number into the calculator. I'm just going to hit enter and see how close I am. Ta-da! The zero value the x-coordinate where the parabola crosses the x-axis here is equal to 1.449498 or 8.97. That is the second zero of the parabola. The set, this is the second place where the parabola crosses the x-axis. And this happens when x approximately equals 1.45. Notice I've rounded again. I've approximated. This is the second zero of our parabola. The coordinates of this second point where the parabola crosses the x-axis are 1.45 comma zero, x-coordinate, y-coordinate. This is the second zero of our parabola. So in problems like this, a lot of times you will be asked to find the zeros of a polynomial. Uh, these are the places where your polynomial crosses the x-axis. They are the x-coordinates of every place that the polynomial crosses the x-axis. These places are called zeros because the value of y at each of these locations is zero. They're just points on the x-axis. They're where your function crosses the x-axis. Here in this quadratic function, our parabola, the zeros are at x equals negative 3.45 and x equals 1.45. Uh, remember how we did that? We did that by entering our equation into the equation editor and then using the second calc uh, zero function to, to find the zeros. We'd enter, we first entered a left boundary, next entered a right boundary, guessed the value, and then the calculator worked its magic and found a zero. Uh, you can use this to find zeros of quadratic functions. You can also use it to find zeros of higher order polynomials, such as cubics. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you have questions or feedback for me, please send them to my instructor identity in Blackboard. Send me a message. Uh, thanks. Bye.